Of late, a flood of news stories about Facebook's ignoble algorithm designed to control human lives has been doing the rounds. The global outage and the shocking revelations by Francis Hagen have only intensified things further for the social media giant. Let us check out how Facebook controls your life. Facebook makes you sad. About 2 billion people log into Facebook every day. Of course, it would seem logical to assume that people use Facebook because it somehow enhances their lives. But oddly, research suggests the opposite. Studies show Facebook use is associated with lower life satisfaction. Studies have revealed that most people aren't using Facebook to be social. Only about 9% of Facebook users' activities involve communicating with others. Instead, most users consume random pieces of content. And researchers found that passively consuming information isn't fulfilling or satisfying. Study participants experienced a sharp decline in their moods after scrolling through Facebook. Interestingly, they didn't experience the same emotional decline when they surfed the internet. The toll on mental health was unique to Facebook. Through a series of studies, researchers concluded that by the time people log out of Facebook, they feel like they've wasted their time. Their remorse over being unproductive causes them to feel sad. Feeling sad after you log out isn't the only way Facebook takes a toll on your mental health. Studies have also found that envying your friends on Facebook leads to depression. Scrolling through happy status updates, exciting vacation photos, and beautiful family moments led participants to compare their lives with those of their Facebook friends. Those social comparisons led people to assume their Facebook friends had better lives. And those feelings of envy increased their chances of developing depression. 6. The Real Life Social Network Your network of close personal friendships, the people you spend time with within your local community, has been altered over the years by your exposure on Facebook. Before Facebook, there used to be a real-life network of friends, family, and acquaintances with whom you always tried to stay in touch via phone or emails. But in this age of social media, young people are particularly prone to becoming addicted to the internet. In a phase of life where social contact with peers plays a major role in self-esteem and personality development, likes and requests for friendship tempt people to spend more and more time in front of the screen. Similar to a gambling addiction, the high feeling when the body releases endorphins can only be felt for a fraction of a second. When the notification shows you have a message or a friend has liked your post. As soon as the smartphone is out of sight, many people start to feel uncomfortable and as if they're missing out. It's hard to imagine a time when smartphones didn't exist. 5. The Subtle Nudge an insight from behavioral science that has been widely adopted by governments and other authorities around the world is the nudge policy. This is where subtle tactics are used to encourage users to adopt a particular behavior. One famous example is making organ donation opt out rather than opt in. Instead of requiring people to register themselves as organ donors, an opt out system automatically assumes that anyone's organs can be used for donation unless they have specified otherwise. Simply by switching the default assumption, more people end up donating. But what's not to like about nudging? Among other things, critics are uneasy about its erosion of informed choice. It can be argued that instead of explaining the issue and fitting the policy to be considered will of the people, nudging fits the will of the people to the desired policy. When we navigate online space, we are continually faced with choices, from what to buy to what to believe, and designers and engineers at big techs like Facebook manage to subtly sway our decisions there. Number 4. Penetrating the Psyche It has recently been revealed how few people at big tech companies make decisions that affect and shape the collective experiences of over 2 billion social media users. Facebook's ad revenue business model, the very mojo that helped it command influence, which relies on monetizing Facebook users' data, is at the heart of the company's difficulties today. Facebook has borrowed a leaf from Google's playbook. The only difference is that instead of betting on search queries, advertisers can bid on people or have the option to show someone an ad. 
Following the success of the online ad revenue model, Facebook began fighting for market share. This involved a fast implementation of various well-studied strategies that exploited human vulnerabilities. It started manipulating users' minds by showing articles that were likely to elicit excitement, hatred, or another emotion that would lead to a user sharing the content. This is why users' feeds are littered with videos of various emotions. The user is also notified about identical videos, ensuring that their interest is maintained. This is one of the reasons why Facebook is so addictive. The company has devised strategies to penetrate our psyche in such a way that our attention becomes their product. Number three, the surveillance threat. We have previously expressed concern about the loss of individual liberty as a result of big government surveillance. However, big business, particularly organizations that specialize in gathering, storing, and analyzing data before selling it to the highest bidder, poses a greater surveillance threat. The companies trading in data are cartels of information. Their goal is to dominate as much of the information market as possible, if not the entire market. The internet industry is undermining something valuable, the possibility of introspection. They've created a world where we're always being tracked with our minds, constantly distracted. They've created an image of our thoughts based on their data collection, which they use to covertly guide mass behavior and increasingly individual conduct to serve their commercial interests. They have harmed the credibility of institutions such as the media and publishing, which provide the intellectual content that stimulates debate and directs democracy. Our most valuable asset, our attention, is their most valuable asset, and they've abused it. The corporations have already achieved their goal of influencing the course of human evolution. We've all turned into cyborgs. Our phones have become extensions of our memories. We've delegated basic brain tasks to algorithms, and we've shared our secrets with servers that are mined by computers. What we must not forget is that we are engaging not only with these technologies, but also with the companies that manage these technologies. And all of this data collection and analysis is achieved with the help of algorithms. Two, be wary of algorithms. The modern day world has been given plenty of reasons to be wary of algorithms. In March 2018, just days after the revelation that Cambridge Analytica, a consultancy that worked on Donald Trump's 2016 presidential election campaign, had secretly siphoned the personal data of tens of millions of Americans from their Facebook accounts in an attempt to influence how they voted. This scandal kicked off Facebook's biggest public relations crisis to date. It fueled speculations that the algorithms that determine what people see on the platform were amplifying fake news and hate speech and that Russian hackers had weaponized them to try to sway the election in Trump's favor. Recently, during an interview, whistleblower Francis Hogan discussed the Facebook program known as Civic Integrity, which was intended to curb misinformation and other threats to election security. The program was dissolved after the 2020 election, which Hagen felt like a betrayal of democracy and which she believed contributed to the unfortunate 2021 United States Capitol attack. Hagen also stated, The thing I saw on Facebook over and over again was there were conflicts of interest between what was good for the public and what was good for Facebook. And Facebook, over and over again, chose to optimize for its own interests like making more money. Number one, aggravating polarization and tribal behavior. In the same year, it was also revealed that the company's algorithms weren't bringing people together. Rather, it was driving them apart. Our algorithms exploit the human brain's attraction to divisiveness. Read a slide from an internal presentation. If left unchecked, it warned, Facebook would feed users more and more divisive content to gain user attention and increase time on the platform. This raised serious concern about whether Facebook was aggravating polarization and tribal behavior among its users. 
The most unfortunate thing among all of this is that Facebook knew that its recommendation algorithm exaggerated divisiveness. Leaked internal research from 2016 appeared to indicate Developing features to combat these issues would require the company to sacrifice engagement and, by extension, profit. Revealed a later document from 2018, which described the proposals as anti-growth and the one that required a moral stance. So, what do you think? What do you think of how Facebook controls your life? How are you planning to live an unplugged life amidst all this chaos? Let us know in the comments below. We hope you enjoyed watching this video as much as we enjoyed bringing it to you. See you next time.